let's now have a look at proposition two. So what are we trying to do here? To place at a given point as an extremity, a straight line equal to a given straight line. So here's what's going on. So we have a given straight line, let's say from here over to here. And in terms of labeling, the given point is gonna be A, and we're gonna call this line BC. So what we're trying to do essentially is take this line and place a line of equal length upon A. We're trying to basically slide this over to this using only ruler and compass. Okay, so let A be the given point and BC the given straight line. Thus it is required to place at the point A as an extremity, a straight line equal to the given straight line BC. Now the first part of the construction, from the point A to the point B, let the straight line AB be joined, which we can do through the first postulate. So we just connect those two guys. So A over to B. And upon it, let the equilateral triangle DAB be constructed, which we can do through the previous proposition that we proved. And so the way we're going to do this is just use our circles. So what we're going to do is use A as the center and AB be the distance used for the circle or the radius. And to find the equilateral triangle, we're just going to draw some arcs like that. No need to draw the entire circle. Run that up a little bit. And we just need to find where those two guys intersect. And we're going to call this intersection D. And we've proved that when we complete the lines, draw those in D over to A, and D over to B, that that's guaranteed to be an equilateral triangle. And the next thing we're going to do is basically extend the line DA and DB a bit further. So let the straight lines AE and BF be produced in a straight line with DA and DB, which we can do by second postulate. We're going to extend these guys a little bit. And the reason we're doing this is in anticipation of a couple intersections. Extend that line that way. And extend this line that way. Notice the relationship these lines eventually originate back in the point D. So we just extend those guys a little bit. And in terms of labeling, we're going to let this one over here be E. And this one over here is going to be F. The next thing we're going to do is produce a circle. Now with center at B and a distance of BC, let the circle CGH be described. So we're going to draw our circle. So the center is going to be B. And our radius or distance is going to be B over to C. Just draw in that circle. And now this intersection point, we're going to call this G. And just for labeling purposes, we'll call this H just to designate the circle. So that's the circle CGH. And again, we're going to produce another circle with a center of D and a distance of DG. So now we're going to go over to that other point that we got on the equilateral triangle, use that as a center. And we're going to draw all the way over to this intersection point. Like so. And now what we're going to do is we're going to call this new intersection point that we got. We're going to call this L and simply K. So that's the circle GKL. So that completes the construction phase of the proposition. And now what we have to prove is that AL, A going over to L, is actually identical, it's actually equal to BC, which was the starting line segment. So AL was the thing we sought to produce. And how do we prove such a thing? Well, let's think about these circles, just as we did for the previous proposition. Then since the point B is the center of the circle CGH, so we're talking about this smaller circle here, BC, BC is equal to BG. Now, why is that true? Well, they're both radii of the same circle, so they must be equal, which you recall from definition 15 and also 16.
so we know these two radii are the same. Again, since the point D is the center of the circle GKL, so now we're talking about the big circle, we notice that D over to L is equal to D over to G. So same argument, these two are both radii of the same circle, so they must be the same, they must be equal. And a further observation, and in these, DA is equal to DB. So DA, that's that one side of the equilateral triangle, is equal to DB. Why is that true? Well, they're both sides of an equilateral triangle, they must be the same. Now, here's another inference. Therefore, the remainder AL is equal to the remainder BG. So the remainder A over to L, so this red line, is equal to BG. Now, why is that true? Remember that DL is equal to DG. Those are both radii in the same circle. So if we take away that side of the equilateral triangle and this side of the equilateral triangle, the things that remain, namely AL and BG, must be the same. If you have equals and you subtract away equals, if you take away equals, then what remains is equal. And that's the common notion number three, or axiom three. So AL must actually be the same as BG. Those are the two remainders, AL and BG. But also remember that BG is a radius of the circle just as BC is. Therefore, BG is equal to BC. So these two guys are also the same. And that's exactly what we tried to show. So we have the line BC, and we've successfully moved it over here and built it upon the point A, the given point A.